Hello, I'm Oliver the Shoe Man, and today we're going to be working on a pair of Dan Post square toe, I believe this is ostrich boots. We're going to be putting new soles and heels, because obviously this one came in then. I already got the heel off, but this happens a lot with these style soles, because it's a multi-piece um, sole. And that's just glued together and over time the glue starts to come undone and then you got that happening which is no good obviously so what we're going to do we're going to put vibram 700 soles on there uh, it's one piece so over time it won't do this it'll just wear down it's a very good quality rubber sole that gives lots of good traction and lasts quite a long time so let's get this thing taken apart even though I already got the heel off. Um, this was the heel block. It went right there. It was nailed on with nails coming up this way. I took those nails out through the bottom. And we just continue by taking off this sole. This is just a little foam filler that they put in uh, the cavity for the Goodyear welted shoe. Uh, I think we're going to replace that with some actual cork itself. Depending on what the other one looks like. I also don't like to change too much on the shoe. Cork and foam does feel a little bit different. Serves the same purpose. The cork lasts longer and, and is better in my opinion. But... Depending on what the other shoe looks like, then we'll do that. So, what I did was I, I, I ran this heel prior in between the leather welt and the sole. That way, I could slide a knife in there real easy and cut those threads without cutting into the welt. And... There you go, it's starting to come undone. Alright, once these threads are cut, the only thing holding the sole on to the shoe is these nails right here in the shank. And there's a few nails in the back here. So, I'm just working on getting these last threads cut in the back where the sole will start to crumble. Oh, all right, that's why you gotta cut the threads. See the welts here, came undone. So I gotta re that back. All right, so I had a customer come in, but see right here, these threads, the welt is sewn on using a chain stitch. So when you're able to take, when you need to take the welt off, it should all come off at one shot, but you just gotta be careful taking the sole off because then that'll do that, so. What you got here is your your sole, obviously. And then in this back piece here, it's hard to tell, but that line right there is called a heel rand. R-A-N-D. Ouch, that hurt. Anyway, so what it is, since you've got your leather welt here, and it comes to here, then you go, then all you see is the um the sole and then you got a little plastic piece 
or leather piece that goes the rest of the way and it's just it makes it look completed I guess um, some shoes have them some shoes don't but I'm going to reuse this because it's still in good shape but I'm going to clean it up first because it's black and you're able to see that right there obviously it's if it's dirty you want to clean it um, and when you got a brown boot it's hard not to it's hard to clean it I like to recolor it actually with some black spray and it's kind of hard to do that I'm trying to get hard to get black spray in there without getting all the brown boots so I take it off that way I could spray it and make it look nice and then put it on there and just completes the job and makes it look better brand new and yeah I did cut my fingers what I did was when I went like this it slipped and these nails right here I guess I guess I cut myself it's fine it doesn't hurt I'll clean myself up but it's part of the job doing it again I don't want to hurt my I don't want to do it again though all right okay I've got that heel ran piece off I'm going to take well, let's crack it a little bit I may just replace this because you see it's cracking already now I'm gonna replace it with some I'll replace it with rubber or not rubber leather and will give you a it'll give a, a better look in my opinion it'll last longer and next time i go to resell these a couple years down the line or however long it takes i won't have to replace it and it'll look better all right so we got it all taken apart now we're going to replace this plastic heel ran with leather heel or leather we're going to i have to restitch this back because the the welt is still in good shape just gotta restitch this back. You have your metal shank here, and they put some sort of nylon or canvas around it. That way, it prevents it from um, prevents it the boots from squeaking. Because over time, metal to leather or metal to rubber, it'll start to squeak if you don't glue it properly or if it comes unglued over time, which happens. So they put this on there to prevent that. So we're going to obviously re-glue the pieces back together, put this back in. Um, this was that foam filler. You can see there's a cavity that needs to be filled from that Goodyear Welts construction and that's what they put this in there. So I don't know yet if I'm still going to reuse it. If not, I have to take the other boot apart first, but we'll do that. Wait on that one. And then all these threads on the top got to be removed so I can go and sew the new sole on. And we're going to have to do a double stitch, white double stitch, which is really hard, but I think I can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and re-sew this back, get the heel rand on, shank, filler, and then I'll see you when we're about to put the sole on the shoe. All right, so at this point, we have the filler back in. I ended up reusing this piece because it's still in good shape and I don't want to change too much on the inside because then and the customer will have to break it in again um, but this he won't have to I'll we'll just have the new soles and heels we got the shank put back in covered we got a new leather heel rand nailed on and you can see it's black it's obviously wide I cut it a little wide I'll shape it to the shape of the heel but you can see I also right here I tapered it down so it's when the new sole comes on it's not gonna there's not gonna be a little ridge there it'll, sl it'll flow smoothly into this piece right here so now all we're gonna do oh and I also put some polishes and creams and cleaned up the leather uppers because the thread that we're gonna be putting is gonna be white off white or it's gonna be white threads um, and if I were to put brown cream all over it it's going to get those white threads and turn them brown so I put all my creams and stuff on first then you put the sole on 
stitch it, and then after, we're gonna put some neutral conditioners and neutral polishes on it. That way those threads stay white. So we'll get a couple coats of glue on the bottom, a couple coats of glue on the sole, then we'll stick them together, and then go ahead and stitch it. So we've got the glue on, it's dried. We got the sole heating up and reactivating. We just gotta heat up this part and then stick it together. Alrighty. So now I'm gonna try to center that logo as best I can in the shank area, but we'll see what we can do here. All right, I think I got it pretty good, so I'm just gonna hammer it on. Press the edges, because so, you can see I got the sole on, right? But right here, where this welts and this sole comes on, when you're hammering it, there's nothing. The metal ass doesn't support the welt, so it's not really getting hammered on. So you take the outside of this of the shoe, and you just go along and you press all the air pockets out. Sorry, I was interrupted. But you can see now, there's really no air pockets. And you can see I got pretty dang close to that front part. Right there, that was pretty close, but that's, the, that's all right. And then here in the back, you can see there's still gaps. And so, just go along. Again, the back part is gonna get trimmed. gonna get trimmed because that's gonna be that's super wide you don't need that much um, and then here in the center you can still see that gap so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into our press which is right here you can see you already got some brown boots in there already Let's see yeah so I got some brown boots in there already I was just re-gluing the soles But you got your different feet for different style of shoes. This is obviously for a smaller shoe. This is for the bigger shoe. So you put that on there, slide that on, and then you could adjust this to come down further if you wanted to. And then it presses the whole entire sole to the shoe, giving it a good bond. You let that sit there for like two minutes, and then do the back, and then you're good to go. This is my Landis L outsole stitching machine. It is what sews the sole to the welt from the outside of the shoe. This right here is a Landis, not a Landis, a Geneva lock stitch. It sews shoes from the inside of the shoe. Okay. Lift it up and you sew it from the inside. But since this is a good year welted shoe, we gotta use this. Um, so I got the white thread on the bottom black thread on top. It sews it upside down, so this white thread that's really on the bottom is gonna be what you're gonna see on the top. The black thread that's on top is what you're gonna see on the very bottom. So you can see I grooved the stitch, I grooved the channel for the stitches to counter sink in. I only did one channel right now. Because what I like to do is I like to groove one channel, stitch it, and then go groove the second channel. 
and then stitch that one. So let's get this one stitched on. And then we gotta hope and pray that we get all the original holes. So let's see here. Oh, you can't see me. Let's see. Is that better? Too bad, not too bad. So now we're gonna go groove the second one and then stitch that second row. Alright, you see we got that second row carved into there. Now this is where it gets scary and tricky trying to get you want it to stay the same distance away from that white thread. You don't want it so you're stitching those same hole, you don't want it to go wavy, you want to be nice and straight all the way around. So that's why I carve these channels, it gives me a nice straight line to go off of. It kind of guides me as I'm stitching it. So oh and then this goes back and forth, right? And then you just adjust it to how deep you want it to go. So I normally put the bottom knife, which I don't know if you can see it. So this, hold on, let me get closer. This right here is your awl. The bottom awl goes up, punctures the leather, the rubber, whatever, moves the shoe over. See, it moved it over. Brings down that top needle, goes through the hole that it made, grabs the thread, brings it up, makes one loop, and then you're back to bring that up. So I put this all right into the channel, and then I lock it using this, this wing nut here. So wish me luck. Oh, camera malfunction. We're good, we're good. Okay, so let's do this thing. truth not too bad not too bad at all that'll work for me so I'm gonna clip these ends stitch that other one and then put your heel block with your rubber top lift on top of it sand finish smooth it out recondition it everything and we're good to go all right <clears throat> we are done with these beautiful boots ended up looking like after being all done and I've cleaned and conditioned the uppers as much as possible put some neutral shine or neutral wax on them um, there's the bottom Let's see 
That's good. A double stitch on that one is good. That double stitch is really hard to accomplish and get it right, especially on a, a welt that's already been stitched on, trying to get the get it into the exact same holes. It's really hard. And so because these boots are harder, normally I have to sew it a couple times. As you get better, you don't have to, but because of the difficulty, you have to charge more. But I really love how these turned out. With the, the new leather heel rant, that's what that piece is right there. So you got this sole, and then you have this piece on top of the sole. That's the heel rand, just the leather piece. And you can see, instead of it just erupting or ab abruptly stopping, kind of smooths into the sole. These, I love these Vibram 700 soles, they're beautiful with a Vibram cowboy heel. Nice and thick, and those holes, you have nails in them, and inside the rubber heel, you have washers that once you glue it on, and you nail it on, um, the nails hold the washers up to the boots, and it just gives it a nice solid construction. Nice solid hold, so. Again, there we go. You guys remember what type of soles they had on before? Hold on, let me go see if I can find them. Okay, so this is what we had earlier. This is a two-piece rubber slash leather sole that Dan Post puts on, and this this always comes undone from it, especially if it's just. I'm sorry, I'm tired. These soles always come undone right here. This always pulls back because it's just glued together, and then as soon as this plastic slash rubber starts to fall apart like that it just gives away and it's, it's no good anymore so it was all trash and this was that plastic heel ran that we had I ended up having to replace it because you can see it's cracked in multiple places and just wasn't no good it was no good so we put leather on there right that shouldn't crack as long as he continues to condition it and take care of his boots. Um, but yeah, this is a one piece sole, so unlike the other one, this one won't fall apart and this rubber doesn't break down like that one did. This will just wear down. So he'll have plenty of life left in his boots. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys have a pair of boots you need resold, just let me know. You can contact me via Instagram or email. I'll include both of those into. The description below. I do all kinds of cowboy boots, dress shoes, regular shoes, whatever you need. Go ahead and contact me. Thank y'all. God bless.